Alright. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Afro Matt Show. I'm your host, Afro Matt, and as usual, actually, this is episode 98. Welcome. Um, I've got we got a jam packed episode. I've been ex- excited for this one all week. I mean, earlier this week we got some spicy news dropped, so we're gonna go over a little bit of everything and hopefully, um, you know, have some fun along the way. So, um, I mean, let's uh, let's get right into it. Actually, you know, I, I haven't done one of these in a while, but I'm gonna start off with the story time because I wanted to get all, to get this off my chest. Earlier this evening, and this is a message directly to the owners of Marshall's Home Goods. Um, your system is whack. It's completely whack. I I I I tried to return an item. Um, that did not. It was it was a sweater that did not fit my cat. It, it was a cat sweater that did not fit. My my cat is too fat for the sweater. I attempted to return it, and uh, because I did not have the receipt, I was given a card with store credit. Okay, that's fine. Now, today, this evening, I was going Christmas shopping. I decided to use that card. I had not yet used the card until that point. I get all the way through their zigzag maze of a line. And I tried to check out, and the lady says there is no money on the card. So I, I, I start fuming instantly. Because not only did Marshalls steal my return, but they also did not put money back onto the card. So it was a $10 item. I lost the item, and I also lost the $10. They practically robbed me of $20. I mean, technically it was 10 either way, but still... I don't have either now. I don't have either. I can't go and return my item. And I don't have the card. So I'm, I'm like... Um, I w- I w- needless to say, I was fuming. I was fuming. I'm coming off a hot one. I'm coming off a fume. It w- it's, I, w- I, I, was, I was pissed. My girlfriend was in the car and she's like, Matt, Matt, you don't have to go in. You, don't, you do not have to go in and yell at anyone. You don't have to yell. We can... God, it, it's $10. You make that... You know, you make that in 30, 30 minutes or whatever. I don't, but, you know, flexing a little bit. But, um, so, yeah, I I got home. I just, I meditated. I took a little bit of a shower. I had to just chill. It's $10, but it's about the principle, right? If you say you're going to give me money for my return and you take my return, at least give me the money back. So, Marshalls, this is a message directly to your um CEO or whoever but if that happens again I will I will fume the fume yeah you'll 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 feel uh, I'll become vengeance I am vengeance and you'll feel my wrath your whole store will feel my wrath I'll save I'll do I'll I, I there's a marshals right next to my office I'll dump there every day you will not have a clean Marshall's bathroom ever in that store. Ever. I guarantee it. Ever. <laughs> I'll go there on every break and I'll pee on the clothes. I don't care. You'll feel my wrath if that happens again. God forbid if it was $20. It's over. I'm going full homeless person. I'll camp outside and scare the customers away. I, I'll do this podcast from a mar- from the Marshalls on one of their. I'll set up right on one of your couches, one of your big bean bags, and I'll just I'll just rant about nine eleven conspiracies. I'll pull people aside until you ask me to leave, and I will still not leave. You'll have to get police involved. The police that do get involved, I'll ask them to join on the podcast. It will be a debacle. You're gonna open a can of can of fury. You don't want to open this can of fury. Get your system together before Christmas. This is your last warning, Marshall's Home Goods. Last, 
Last warning. <clears throat> There's my fat cat in the background. Fat ass cat. Okay. Um, yeah, let's just get right into the news because this is a spicy week. Um, so I wanted to start with going over the possible biggest piece of technology that has dropped in my lifetime. And I was around for the iPhone. This is the biggest leap in human technology since, you know, like the internet. So I'm going to have this guy explain it a little bit. It's a one minute video. He'll explain it and then we'll go into it. So here we go. We just had one of the biggest upgrades in artificial intelligence history, and the internet is freaking out. This is ChatGPT, a new language model from OpenAI that has been described as scary good and could be the Google killer. This AI is fluent in every speaking and programming language, and it can write poems, essays, code programs, and even debate with you. So how is this going to benefit you? Well, its users have already had it create a complete SEO content strategy for their website, explain in depth the history of modern physics for 20 minutes, found all of the bugs in a line of code and then fixed them, written complete scripts for TV, presentation and content and even designed a multiple choice Harry Potter video game quest. You can even do things is, like yeah. ask ChatGPT to redesign a room for you, place its answers into its cousin program Dolly, and have a complete rendering made up for you. This is all free for you to use and it even helped me write the script for this video. And well it might Yeah, so it's it's an open source AI engine. And I talked about AI a while back during when um when the AI was being used to create artif like they're using artificial intelligence to create images like it would create an image you tell it what you want and then it would create the image uh somehow somewhere it, 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 you could ask it to draw a picture like picasso and it would it's just i mean the technology is stupid crazy right now but we're we've gotten to the point where um, and I signed up for an account. So I have GBT. It's it's free for anyone to make an account. So you can do this at home. But it is absolutely wild. Like, I always thought that humans' jobs would become obsolete in my lifetime. I didn't know it was going to be, like, we're, it feels like we're at the very beginning of like an upward climb or, or maybe we're on the peak of like a spiral on a roller coaster going straight down to like no like humans no longer have positions like the thing about ai is that it's so exponential because this is like such a major breakthrough and now people can code with this ai you can tell it here i have it pulled up right now um, I don't know anything about coding. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of retarded in general, but I'm going to ask, um, let's see, write a Java script. I don't know what any of this means. So write a Java script code to play tic-tac-toe. Let's see if it even knows what tic-tac. Here's a basic here is a basic JavaScript code for a game of tic tac toe. Create an array, whatever, and it's making the board. So you can see it typing here and it and it's making the code. It's doing the, like I would be able to explain this, but I don't know what's happening. It's typing the code. I don't even know how to run this, but like if you knew what this was, look, okay, it finished. Oh wait, no, now it's saying Check for diagonal if diagonal wins. Check for vertical if vertical wins. Three in a row equals win. Um, if no player has won a game and is not um, and it is not a good draw, draw the game continues. Um, so it just keeps. I, I mean, it, it, this is actually insane. It's typing as I'm speaking, and now it's telling me to use this code and call the make move. So, I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. I know Tic-Tac-Toe is a simple game, but the fact that I can just copy this code, run it, and then I I have created a Tic-Tac-Toe game is insane. Like, AI is... The reason I say AI is exponential is because now that everyone has access to this thing, now, the people that know what they're doing 
can ask this ridiculous questions. Like, I was only making tic-tac-toe, but they can have it probably make its own chat GBT. Um, and then there's talk of, like, making two AIs communicate with each other. And then they're having, like, a circle jerk of, like, just generating knowledge with each other. So you have one asking the questions, one answering, and, and it has, a, it has a, like, a conversation. Um, yeah, I mean... I'm not scared of it gaining sentience, but I'm not even scared of it taking everyone's jobs because that's inevitable, and you have to kind of accept that. But the crazy thing is, I thought all I thought programmers were going to be like the last ones out from the job replacements. I thought jobs like mine, you know, telemark. I'm not a telemarketer, but it's the easiest way to describe it. Um, but like programmers i thought was the last one but now like programming interviews they're doing in person because people are cheating with this schools school you could have this thing write an essay on the giver but with all with all this technology um i mean i've just been i i, I this is the greatest piece of enter like piece of technology ever created and i've just been using it to write like seinfeld episodes um so let's 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 see sign dude this thing can actually write seinfeld episodes so let's see write a seinfeld episode script about kramer um Seinfeld script about Kramer. What is Kramer doing? Kramer is, um, let's see, running for president. Oh, let's see, running for president. Okay, let's see what happens. All right, it's going. So it starts at Monk's Cafe. George, uh, Jerry, George, and Elaine are sitting at the table. Kramer enters with a suit. And a red Make America Great Again hat. Oh, no! No! No, Kramer! No, Kramer! Oh, no! Dude, Kramer went full Q. Okay, wait. So let's go with the script. <clears throat> Kramer. Hey, guys. You're not going to believe this. I'm running for president. J Jerry says, president of what? Kramer says, president of the United States. Jerry, I've decided to throw my hat in the ring. George, but Kramer... You have no experience in politics. Kramer, experience? Pfft, this country, country is sick of politics. Or politicians. It's time for an outsider. Someone who will sh shake things up a little bit in Washington, Jerry. Elaine, and you think you're, that person is you? Kramer, damn right I do. I've got the charisma, the vision, the hair for the job. And I, I imagine him stroking his hair as he does that. Jerry, but what about your campaign platform? Kramer, I'm going to make America great again. Jerry, no. No, Kramer, I'm going to make America great again, Jerry. George, that's already been done. Kramer, no, no. I'm going to make America even greater. And I've got some big plans for it. Elaine, like what? Well, first, I'm going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Kramer, no. Uh, Jerry, that's not original, Kramer. Kramer, fine, fine. I'll come up with something else. But I'm telling you. With me as president, this country will be great again. George, I don't know, Kramer. I think you might be uh, might have a tough time getting elected. Kramer, don't worry, George. I've got a secret weapon. Elaine, what's that? I'm going to use my celebrity connections to get endorsements. I mean, who wouldn't want to be associated with a future re leader of the free world? Jerry, well, good luck with that, Kramer. Thanks, Jerry. And remember, vote for, uh, vote for Kramer 2024. Wait. No, no, vote for Kramer 2020. Elaine, wait, isn't it 2022? Kramer pauses. Oops, well, my campaign is off to a r rocky start. Dude, they even have joke, like laugh laugh track. J um, Jerry, to George and Elaine, this is going to be a long election se season. George, sighs, tell me about it. The scene ends with Kramer leaving the cafe and still wearing his red hat. Fade to black. Next scene. And then you could ask, what's the next scene? What's the next 
scene. Like I've just I literally this is the greatest technology I'm using it to write about. <clears throat> <clears throat> let's see what's the next scene in this episode expand on this let's see if it keeps on going oh it's it's literally expanding okay so okay well never mind it's just it's it's ma it's adding more to that scene. Okay, so but you you see what I'm saying? Like the the greatest fingertip, the f greatest technology in the world at our fingertips, and um, you make it do some crazy shit. You can have it make a make a eulogy for um Jeffrey Epstein. Let's see, write a, a eulogy. How do you spell a eulogy? There it is. Eulogy for Jeffrey Epstein given by, who should be delivering the eulogy? Given by Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton probably did a, a eulogy. Dear friends and loved ones, we are gathered here today to celebrate the life of Jeffrey Epstein, a man who touched many of our lives in immeasurable ways. <laughs> okay, Bill. Okay, I have to do it in, in, in the, the Bill Clinton voice. Dear friends and loved ones, we are gathered here today. Uh, I'm not, I cannot do this whole thing in Bill Clinton. That's... I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Uh, while we may not have always agreed with his methods or cho choices, there is no denying that Jeffrey was brilliant and successful. Uh, was a brilliant and successful businessman who always was looking for new and innovative ways to push the boundary of what is possible. That is true. He was a true visionary, and we are all better for having known him. <laughs> no, you are not. But beyond his professional accomplishments, Jeffrey has also was also a kind and generous friend who was also there to lend a helping hand. He was a man of great empathy and compassion, and he used his wealth and influence to make the world a better place for so many people. Oh yeah, I'm sure. That's what he's known for today. Jeffrey will be deeply missed for all who had the privilege of knowing him. His passing leaves a void in our lives that would be impossible to fill. But while we mourn his loss, we can we all we can also take comfort in the knowledge that he lived full a full and rewarding life and that his legacy will live on through all the good he did in this world. May he rest in peace, Bill Clinton. So, I mean <laughs> Is this not the most retarded thing in the world? Oh man, what else can we even make this thing do? This is like this is like my new favorite tool. I have literally just been sitting at my phone typing prompts into this all day. Um, let's see. Write a episode of The Office where they find out JFK just died. This is like a office set in the past Let's see if it would go it was a normal day at dunder mifflin scranton the office was bustling with activity and everything went everyone went to work suddenly the door of the office burst open to dwight russian everyone everyone he shouted turn on the tv now jeff jfk has been assassinated the office fell silent as they're gathered by the television watching the breaking news tears streaming down pam's face as she watched the footage jim put his arm around pam trying to comfort him. it's okay pam he said it's going to be all right Meanwhile, Michael struggled to process the news. He always admired JFK and the idea of a youthful, charismatic president. I can't believe this is happening, he said, shaking his head. As the day went on, the office struggled to focus on work. Many of them took breaks to listen to the radio or watch the news for updates. By the end of the day, they all felt a sense of shock and sadness. As they left that evening, they all knew things would be better, uh, would never be the same again. Dang. 
That was that's a sad episode. That's a sad episode of The Office. Not much, n- not very fun. Not a fun one. Um. Yeah, I mean, like this is. I mean, it's crazy. Like, just imagine so many people have jobs just got so much easier. Like, if you're writing an episode of She-Hulk, now, I mean, that mo- that show was already almost, like, written by AI. Like, it felt, like, watching it, it felt like it was written by AI. But now it's, like, actually going to be written by AI. Let's see. Write an outline for the next Marvel movie. These are, like, the most... Marvel movies are, like, the most, like, probably AI knows exactly what they're going to do, so... Let's see. Oh, she's having trouble. Um, write an outline for a new Marvel comic movie let's see here's a possible outline for the new new marvel movie the movie begins with a brief inter- introduction of the main character a superhero with extraordinary powers the superhero is given those powers by, uh, to fight crime and save the day well, well this is i mean generic dude i mean this is how every ep- how every movie goes though the superhero meets a new nemesis a powerful and cunning vision vision villain who poses a threat to their city and their world i mean they all they they're all pretty much the same. So I mean, I mean it, it, this is I mean it's it's crazy. And I don't I don't know the limits to this thing. Um, man, I want I I'm trying to think of something to test it. Like I want to continue pushing the limits of this thing and see how far, and how like retarded this thing can get. Because I have a feeling like this can get so much crazier. Um. Uh, well, I, and it's kind of limited because it doesn't have all the way up to date information all the way to 2022. I think it only has current events up to 2021. But I mean, this thing is crazy. It, it's super fun to use too. Um. Let's see. Right. Ooh, ooh, we could do something for the podcast. Write a script for a podcast about the news. Write a script for a comedy podcast. Here we go. Introduction, podcast studio, day. Oh, wait, this is uh, the host, Jim. Wait, wait, what? I mean, wait, what? Jim and Sarah? What? Well, who are these people? This is a, is this a TV show that I don't know about? Okay. No, no. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. Write an outline for a comedy news podcast or YouTube. Here we go. Yo, you thinking, huh? It's taking its sweet time. Okay. Wait, let me. Oh, oh, here it goes. Introduce the host and their roles. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Afro Matt with the rem. Oh, no. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I almost just doxed my. <clears throat> I almost just went into work mode. Remax. Holy shit. Um. Introduction, the host and their roles, give a brief overview of the show and what to expect, set the tone for the episode with a funny opening monologue or skit. Uh, This is fun. This is fun. All right. All right. Opening monologue. Um, Okay. Let let me ask it to write an opening monologue. Write an opening monologue. Like, you don't have to think anymore, guys. Your brain... Shut it off. We're going AI. My gonna have a built-in AI thanks to Tesla. 
so I'm having it write the open monologue, and apparently they're having heavy traffic right now. That's why it's taking so long. But so give a brief overview of the show and what to expect. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Afro Matt Show. Today you'll be uh, we'll be going over the news. That's what you should expect. Um, so let's go right into my monologue. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our show. I'm your host Afro Matt, and joining me tonight is my co-host, um, no one, and guest name. It's been a crazy week in the news. Insert current events or news stories that can be made fun of. Brittany Griner is being let out of prison. Can you believe it? I mean, honestly, who saw that coming? (laughs) (laughs) I'm trying to get my uh, Saturday Night Live laugh down. I need a laugh track. Laugh track. Here we go. Oh, well, that works. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our show. I'm your host, Afro Matt. Welcome to the Afro Matt Show. And joining me tonight is absolutely no one. It's been a crazy week in the world of news. Um, For instance, Brittany Griner has been let out. I, I instantly go into Tucker Carlson. Brittany Griner has been let out of prison and traded for a Russian's arm dealer. I'd say that is quite possibly the worst trade in WNBA history. Can you believe it? I mean, who saw that coming? And then we go to... (laughs) I should have had this for the the episode where he runs for president. (laughs) But enough of that. Let's move on to our first segment. We have a great guest joining us to discuss topic of interview. To discuss racism but first let's let's take a look at some of the dumbest crimes of the week <laughs> dumbest, insert funny crime story i mean really who tries to steal a police car like kramer stay tuned for more laughs and shenanigans in tonight's episode of the afro Matt show and then it kind of cuts to yeah oh uh. Oh, hit that bass. All right, all right. Now now we go into the next news segment. Cover the top news of the week in a humor, in a humorous way. Thank you for making it that easy. <clears throat> all right, let's go right into it. I, I, I mean, we'll go right into it. Brittany Griner, WNBA star Brittany Griner, <laughs> Brittany Griner, released from Russian detention in prison swamp, swap for convicted arms dealer. So if you guys don't know, we have traded. Uh, so if you don't know who Brittany Griner is, she's an WNBA star who um, got caught smoking some of the uh, some of that some of that good some of that dank. She got caught smoking some dank in Russia. First off, why do you bring dank to Russia? I know it wasn't grass. She wasn't smoking grass, but she was she was hitting that. She was hitting some blinker. She was going to Blinkerton City. Um, in Blinkerton, if you don't know where Blinkerton is, um, on the dab pens, when you when you hit it, it it'll blink when when you're when you're supposed to stop. And that's blink. She went to Blinkerton City and she stayed there for a while. She was forced. She was forced to stay in Blinkerton City for a bit. So she was so she was uh, taken prisoner in Russia, and I mean, being a prisoner in Russia must suck ass. But we have decided to bring her home, bring her home, and we have traded Brittany Griner for <clears throat> Victor Bout, a Russian arms dealer known as the. Get this. What what is what is Victor? Bout's nickname. He was like something the death. Victor Bout nickname. They have a nickname for him that's like Lord of War. So we've traded the Lord of War for (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I mean Christ. 
almighty. Merchant of Death. He has two nicknames, Merchant of Death and Lord of War. So we have traded the Merchant of Death, Lord of War for WNBA star Brittany Griner. And what might possibly be the worst deal in human history? <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I truly don't know what can, what took what took over Biden to make this sort of like sweetheart deal to Russia. Hey, have your most wanted. This guy, this guy, Victor Bout, is literally on the America's most wanted like terrorist list. Like he's on the most wanted person. Like he's one of the most wanted people. Brittany Griner wasn't even wanted by her own team. I mean, I mean, what? So this is Biden said. So Biden said efforts to bring Griner home took painstaking and intense negotiations. Dude, you're negotiating for a WNBA star. No one even watches WNBA. Meanwhile, there's there's this guy. Look, listen. This guy named Paul Wenlin. He's a prisoner of war, ex-Marine, who's in prison right now in Russia, and he was he was not up for trade, I guess. They'd opted for Brittany Griner. Paul Whelan tells CNN he's disappointed that Biden administration has not done more to secure his release. Well, yeah, I would be too. But you're not a tall, black, lesbian WNBA player. I mean, this might be the most anyone's talked about the WNBA, like, ever. I I mean probably ever. This is the day we've worked towards for a long time. We have not we have never stopped pushing for her release, he said. Biden dude, can you shut the fuck up? You're trading mass wars arm dealers like like he's a like he's an athlete. You can't you, dude, you got to keep that guy locked up. Dude, imagine the guy who you s- imagine you snitch on the Lord of War, Merchant of Death, and you you're realizing he's getting traded for a WNBA player right now, dude? I- I'd kill myself in Russia. You're the guy who turned in the Merchant of War. The CIA probably offered you some sweetheart deal. They're like, dude, if you give us the location of the Merchant of War, we'll uh, we'll we'll toss you a, a couple G's, you know. And now you realize he's being released, and you're like, "Shit, the Merchant of War is literally probably my home. My home is probably already being raided." <laughs> that guy's shitting himself. But yeah, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about this because it's freaking retarded. But um, it's funny. I mean, hey, I mean, I I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm not even gonna watch the WNBA to see her play. She's probably going to write some book. Uh, she's going to definitely write some book. She'll be on some podcast. Maybe I could get her on this podcast. She, she wouldn't know it would go on this podcast. No one even goes on this podcast besides me. It, it's, a, it's a ramblings of a lo- lunatic at this point. All right, let's continue. <clears throat> Cover top stories of the week in a humorous way. Use satire, parody, and improvisation to make news more entertaining. Thank you. Include funny sound effects and musics to enhance your joke. Dude, what? Dude, yes. Okay. Thank you, AI. So this episode has been written by AI. <clears throat> All right, let's continue with more news. Um, amid outcry, San Francisco pauses killer police robots. We should be working on ways to decrease the use of force by local law enforcement, not giving them new tools to kill people. So people are upset by the killer robots. San Francisco, uh, famously, last episode I talked about this, they impl- are trying to implement a new system of robots to patrol streets and possibly take lives it is armed with lethal force which is pretty awesome 
San Francisco supervisors voted Tuesday to put brakes on controversial pause policy that would have let police use robots to use deadly force, reversing course just days after their approval of the plan generated fierce pushback and warnings about the militarization and automation of policing. So I think I made this argument last time that having robots be policemen isn't necessarily the worst thing because policemen are it's a tough job and it sucks to be a policeman i don't even think policemen want to be policemen the type of person that becomes a policeman don't really have i mean many options in life i mean policemen it's like no one wants to be a policeman and the people that do want to be a policeman become I mean, they probably go into the army so they can shoot people because that's what they really want to do. If you get down to the bottom of it, they want to just shoot people. That's where you send people that want to shoot people. Um, But, you know, the automation of policing, it sounds like a bad thing. And it probably is going to be a bad thing until it gets kind of honed down. But... And it has a lot of ways that it can be abused. So it has a lot of downsides. But human police officers suffer so much trauma. So much trauma. That when they leave, they're a shell of the human being that they were before when they went in there. It's sad. They beat their wives. They all turn to drink because they can't tell anyone. You want to come home from work and tell your wife that you saw someone blow their brains out? No, they, so they no one talks. None of the police officers talk to their wives about what happened at work because it would just depress them. They don't have anyone to talk to. They all just drink, and then they get frustrated and beat their wives. Statistically, statistically beat their wives. On average, they beat their wives. What if they programmed the robot to beat their wives? <laughs> oh, God. Okay. <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's so dumb. Okay. So, um, but yeah, no, policing's a tough job. And I don't envy one. It, I don't envy one. I don't en- envy anyone who who has to do it because, I mean, they don't have to do it, but they don't. Some of these people don't have really many skills or the best education. Um, and in a lot of cases, they're they want they want to be respected. And how do you get respect instantly? Well, you go to the academy. That's how you can get respect. Maybe you didn't get respect in high school. You know how do you get respect in the real world? With a nice big Kevlar chest plate and a gun on your holster. And wear some nice thick sunglasses. No one can see your eyes. Then you can stop whoever you want. They have to respect you then. You know, that's what I imagine some of the mindsets of these, these individuals are. Maybe they got bullied or something as a kid. They started becoming a gym cell. If you don't know what a gym cell is, it's a, it's an incel who just goes to the gym. It's like a new breed of incels who are just yoked. Actually, I did. I knew someone who was kind of a gym cell. <laughs> he was yoked. He was yoked. But um, <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. They're like so buff, but they can't get any puss. It's, it's crazy. But um, <laughs> like they're they're huge. they're some of the biggest dudes. But um, anyways, gym cells. What are we talking about? Yeah, police. So, I mean, making robots do policing, as long as you don't, like, interfere with the programming, like, as long as you're not driving up, you're having the robot just, like, scan black people, black person detected, like, we gotta stop with that thing. But, um, yeah, I'm glad that they're stopping this program, because... You know, the longer we can hold this off, it's probably better. But uh, I just think that robot police dogs just patrolling the streets is 
It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild for sure. <clears throat> All right, let's see what the AI wants us to do next. Have a guest on the show to discuss their work or a current event. Use this interview as an opportunity for more comedic material and improv. Ask unexpected or humorous questions to keep the conversation light and entertaining. Well, I don't have a guest. Um, so I'm going to have Kermit the Frog on. And uh, we'll go from there. Here we go. Hey, Kermit, what do you think about the Brittany Griner trade? Kermit D. Frog here. Um, I think no, this is uh, I'm, this is actually retarded. Okay, we're skipping this part of the AI. Games and segment. Play games with the guest or have the um, or with the host to generate laughs. Have reoccurring. Oh, this is like this is like the um, the games on SNL where like they'll smash a, an egg on their head or something. Those are fun. Actually, dude, let me play this clip of SNL. This is actually SNL. TikTok just released their 10 most popular videos of 2022. And there's some pretty cool videos in there. For example, this is what the top SNL video is. was of a chocolatier making oh, a Oh, no, this is The giraffe. Tonight Show. Take a, look at, take a look at this. The Tonight Show. Yeah, I mean, that's impressive. But, but unfortunately, it bumped this video off the list. <laughs> Dude, this is a dude. You are watching a YouTube video of a person watching a TikTok of a guy hosting a light light night TV show, watching TikToks. Okay, let me rephrase that again. You're watching a guy on YouTube watching a TikTok of a guy that who that hosts a Tonight Show, watching TikToks. What in the world is happening? <laughs> Another video in the top ten. Jimmy Fallon is. I mean, dude, what are they? He must. He must not even enjoy this anymore. They've got him chained to that desk. They feed him through a straw. He just goes back to his green room, and there's just like. He's just locked in there like a gerbil. There's a. There's like a tube, a feeding tube, and he's just like, and then he goes back out, and he's like, <laughs> you're so funny. What, what is happening on The Tonight Show recently? Let's go to YouTube and open up The Tonight Show. Tonight Show, Jimmy Fallon. <clears throat> The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. Let's sort by most popular. Let's see what their most popular event is. A lot, a lot of musical. A random singer. This and is a, a fun game. Okay? His show was made in an AI. Is, you have to do an impression of that musician doing that song. Okay, Adam, you go first. Bring go. it this on. Is your, this is your microphone here. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'll take Ooh, this one. All right, ready? Let's press the button. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, this is definitely random, by the way. Frank Sinatra. Head, Thanks, shoulders, Sinatra. knees, and toes. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Yes. What's the end thing? Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> right. Another one reason that's not. That's, that's, that's great. How do you do that? This, this is. No, that's good. All right. Here we go. I feel like at, I feel like there's a certain point where like this will be like. This will be highbrow in probably 10 years. This this type of thing, like impressions, yeah, he's talented. Yes, he has talent. But five years from now, the people that are on Jimmy Fallon's show will not have talent. They'll be like, they will be f people that are famous for being famous. Somehow famous for being famous, you know? Like, and, and, and the type of, because you can't have someone who has no talent do impressions. You can't really have them do much for your show you just have to like resort to like i guess what jimmy fallon does with some people is smash eggs on your head is it an egg or is it empty or um i guess they'll probably just start sliming sliming people like they do on the nickelodeon show but here we go 
I, I, you know, my video is going to 100% get claimed if I keep on playing this. Okay, next up. Play games. Okay, we played the game. It's called Make Fun of Jim Lee Fallon. Conclusion. Summarize the major points of the episode. Oh, oh, we can do TikTok. That's a TikTok times a game. We will, we'll play that game. So we did that one. Let's do this one. Oxford Dictionary Word of the Year. 2022 Oxford Word of the Year has been revealed, and it's actually two words. It's goblin mode. <laughs> Here's the definition, if you haven't heard the term. It means a type of behavior which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly, or greedy, typically in a way that rejects social norms or expectations. Now, yeah, this I'm word was actually picked mode. by the public, and it's the first time the Oxford University Press has put the word of the year up for a vote, and that particular one, Goblin Mode, captured a whopping 93% <laughs> of the vote, beating out other options like hashtag I stand with and metaverse the fuck is i hashtag i stand with how is that going to make it into the oxford how are you going to put an ox a hashtag into the oxford dictionary jesus christ yeah thank god goblin mode made it in there goblin mode that is my new favorite word go in goblin mode all right let's continue with a couple other <clears throat> um Mischief. Oh, okay. So that so last episode I showed you Duplo breaking the record on the installation at um something Basil Art Basil. They have an art installation where you it's an ATM. You put your card in and then it shows your account balance when you check it when you when it when it deposits whatever. So the new record has just been claimed. Diplo had three million dollars in his account, and now, um, well, of course, the art installation is to make fun of like money and tier list and all that stuff, like being the best at what having money. Okay, good, good, night. good job. And everyone has their phones out. This guy's like, I'm gonna beat him. So the new, the newest one is five mil, five point five million dollars, beating out Diplo at three. And there's his, there's his uh, trophy wife, most likely. <laughs> Some like hot Filipino chick who won the bag. Spare some change, yeah, dude. Yeah, hey. Yeah, that's wild. Imagine you eat at, at Art Basel, and you see their thing up there, and they don't tip. You see their, their their first place and they don't tip. You're like, okay, I know your account balance. Spare a doll, spare a couple checks, bro. All right, let's uh let's finish off with a couple more of these. Oh yeah, I saw this I saw this video. This was pretty funny. Um, came home from AA meeting to this. So this the, first off the caption is I mean this is great. Came home from an AA meeting to this. An AA, if you don't know, Al Alcoholics Anonymous. And what she came home to is um, this is a kid with Down syndrome. Um, so let's let, let, let's just let the video play. I, I can't see if he has a weapon, but he is holding a flashlight in a tactical fashion. I do not have a warrant. Yes, you do. Boy, go to bed. Put your hands up now. It is, it is past your bedtime. Put your hands up now. So he's, I think he's holding time. a gun. Pull your hands up now, man. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's holding a gun. Austin. Put your hands up. Don't make me say it twice. Oh my God. You are. I think said he has twice. a reticle. Pull your hands up now. Go to bed. Oh, that might be it. Pull your hands up now. Said, go to bed. Pull your hands up now. Oh God. I think it's Here just a go. Twizzler. Here we go. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But <laughs> it's a funny video. <clears throat> All right. I want to end um, on a, let's see. Let's ask the AI, um, write a conclusion monologue for a podcast. Oh, God. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight's show. We sure hope you enjoyed our discussion with guest name and our hilarious segments.
Before we go, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors. Sponsors today are uh, the Taliban and Taco Bell Corporate and um, the Tonight Show. Also sponsored by Nitroglycerin. Before, um, thank you so much for tuning in. And be sure to join us next week for more laughs and entertainment. Good night. And then we, then we hit it with one of these. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's, it's I, okay. I'm going to tell it to make a longer conclusion. Great. Here's a longer version of the conclusion monologue. As a wrap at tonight's show, we want to thank all of you for joining us. We would love, um, we hope that you had as much fun listening as we did making the show. Am I right? Before we sign off, let's take a moment to thank our amazing guest. Amazing guest, Kermit the Frog. What's up, dude? Kermit the Frog here. I have crippling depression. I want to kill myself. <laughs> um, their insights and humor added so much to the show. We are so grateful that we had them on. Thank you. I want to Kermit suicide. We also want to give a big shout out to our sponsors. Our sponsors is, uh, today is uh, the Taliban and um, Need for Speed Tokyo Drift. Without their support, the show wouldn't be possible. So thanks all of our sponsors for the continued support. But most of all, we wanted to thank you, loyal listeners. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to do this and do what we love. So thank you for tuning in each and every week. And for being part of our show. We'll be back next week with more laughs and entertainment. So be sure to join us then. Until then, good night and have a great week. There we go. And then we do. And then we hit it with the. <clears throat> this could be smoother. <laughs> this could be smoother, but. Where Larry on Seinfeld would shoot another Whoa, whoa, whoa. Said, but, and he had... There we go. Thanks for listening. Bye.